So good evening, everybody. Welcome to another session of the Gathering Heritage Project. Last week, we were speaking about how this is a social innovation project to capture uh, pictures, video stories from all around Loud, and in particular Dundalk. Last week, we were talking about Cumbrasil Street, and this week, we are going to finish off our conversation and show you some really great pictures from the 1980s. So let me introduce you to Mr. Harry Lee. Hi, Jason, and everybody is very, very welcome to it. And last week, we talked about, you know, from the square, we talked about the left-hand side right down as far as PJ Carl's. Now, today, we are going, tonight, rather, we are going to talk about the right-hand side on your way down. And we start with... Hanratty's shop and a view from the square and isn't that just a lovely lovely view actually there uh, and Hanratty shoes is on the right hand side there and we will just will zoom uh, into it it's uh, been there a long long time there is history to it unfortunately I, i'm not privy to it but uh, there is history to that building it's a they can't oh. do anything with with the building you know yeah i'd say there's a preservation order on that building. yes though. yeah it's, yeah it looks to me like it's been there Oh, since the 1900s, it looks like to me, but I don't know. Well, I heard actually only today, and I just hadn't time for to look it up. But uh, I'm going to, to uh, the next time we talk about any of the, the town, we'll get the information on that building because okay. this chap know, knew a bit about it. Okay. Now, so um, it's still a shoe shop, Hanratty's, and uh, owned by uh, a gentleman that he, he and his sons now, of course, and behind it, down Market Street a bit, there's a Hanratty's Wholesale. It's mm -hmm. long gone now. And also a, a, a toy shop uh, of Hanratty's. They own quite a lot of the building is just behind there. Right. And a huge, huge bit. Uh, but look at that little gem in the middle of it there in the yellow. Yeah. Now, not the two girls walking up. Mm -hmm. We're looking at that little kiosk as we used to call it now, isn't that just absolutely brilliant there and it goes to show you jason at that time in Cambrassa street shops would be building anywhere they would open shops anywhere uh, but yeah. i just i went i was, was down to town this morning and i just noticed something that came to my mind that all of the shops on the right hand side going down are all yeah. much smaller little shops right. and on the left hand side they're all the banks and the supermarkets mm. and you know i walked out i think why mm. because on the left hand side where woolworths and all of those was there was a back entry from the long walk right and there, there was no point in having a big supermarket in and the right hand side right. even though there was a few big shops in it well but spotted, basically well they're spotted. all small yeah <laughs> that was well not i never thought of that yeah. yeah but anyway this little kiosk the, uh, the lady sold cigarettes and ice cream and yeah. she'd come along there she hadn't room to move in it and she okay. would open up and just go in and sit there all day and she did very well and yeah, so of course uh, you you explained this to me before, uh, like there was a doorway here. Was the doorway here, J just right here? The door, yes, yes. There, okay. the, the the door was there, and it, it was, I think the door must have been glass or something. I, 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 because yeah, so it, the whole the, the whole thing opened out onto the street. Is that what you were saying? It, yeah. No, it only opened out one. There was a half door. Right. Okay. And she talked out through the right. Um, so, so there was a separate door here because I remember going into this shop when I was about eight or nine, and I remember being there was toys, there was kids' toys in the window, and it was kind of like sweets and stuff like that. Yeah. No. Well, no. That is the shop beside it. Right. Martin's so, the the toy shop, okay. and they see where the girls are. Yeah, that yeah. that's where Martin's. That wee kiosk is only that little piece that you put the just arrow on there. there. It's only that there. tiny wee 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 bit right. there. Okay, that okay. that's where the kiosk was. Yeah, okay. but you're right. Martin's, um, the uh, toy shop, uh, yeah. was just uh, just there. Okay. And um, 
going down next to it here now, there was two butchers. There was right. Molly, Molly Malone's uh, pork uh, shop and yeah. Molly Malone, who would be, uh, she'd be an aunt of Mary Malone and, and Paddy and all of those. Oh, right, right. And, okay. they, and they walked in the shop, I believe. Okay. And uh, it was a, a, it was a brilliant shop. They did a great business. And next to it, then was Paddy Martin's the butchers. Okay. And um, Paddy, of course, was famous for his uh, Mike Murphy taking the mick out of him on the live mic one time. Right. And um, he, I, I, <laughs> it was very good because the camera was over where Boyd's is now in one of the windows upstairs. Right. And uh, Paddy, of course, was in the shop and a great businessman. And Mike yeah. Murphy had one of them paint things that you write in the window, last few things, you know, right. bargains here and all of this. Yeah. But Mike went over, I can't uh, be honest about this. I can't remember what he did on it, but I'm going to just say to make the story that all, all lamb chops, half price for the next door. <laughs> and... Right. Somebody went in and said, a few of them lamb chops. Then, what are you talking about, lamb chops? And right. she took Paddy out, and there was all this written on the window. Okay. Of course, Paddy came out and he washed it all down. Who the hell put that up and put that up? Right. I'm not quite sure how many times Matt Mo or Matt Murphy, Matt, uh, Mike Murphy came over and done it. But the right. third time, he caught him. I was right. going to kill him. He was going. To, it was. Okay. It was brilliant. It, it's. I'm sure that's still on on uh, YouTube. Yeah. So you know. for anybody yeah. who doesn't uh, remember, Mike Murphy had a kind of a uh, candid camera. Candid camera type of kind thing. Of thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We we'll yeah. keep going. We we'll keep going. Yeah. Just no, here, there was a, a tiny wee shop there where you're pointing to. Yeah. Yeah. No, that is there's a wee shoe shop I think in it now. That was owned by a, a lady called, I think it was a lady, it could have been a married couple, a tiny little shop it was again. And they sold, they sold things like uh, scarves and uh, mm. light linens and tablecloths okay. and, and stuff like that. And you like see the that. sign that's outside it there, Harry, like that looks to be like a pub. I said this to you before. But yeah. That, what was that sign then? No, I'm not 100% sure because the Lone Hotel, of course, is next to it. Yeah, and it yeah. is, it, I'm convinced that is a pub. No, the more yeah. you look at it. But because that wee shop was so tiny, but yeah. I just can't remember. So maybe okay. somebody might. Well, listen, uh, yeah, this is probably is a good no. opportunity for us to say that people can add, can join into the conversation. If they add in on the chat or if they post on Facebook, we'll be able to see their comments. So if someone has an idea, of exactly whether that was a pub or whether it was a linen shop, let us know. It, Jason, that was a pub. I'm, I can okay. see it now in my mind's eye, yeah. but I would love to know who owned it or okay. uh, anything like that. Well, so the Lorne Hotel, of course, yeah. which was uh, in um, one of the most popular places for weddings. Mm -hmm. uh, we you know anybody had, who got uh, married there, Harry? Uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> and we got married there in 1961. Right. And they did most of the weddings in the town. But this was in the morning. There was no such thing as, as dinner and everything. Right. It was breakfast. And, oh. It, you, you, oh, yeah, breakfast. You know big dinners in those days. But, yeah. but it was very popular. Yeah. And uh, the building is still gorgeous. It's Macketeers yeah. has it now, haven't they? So, um, so, Harry, was that was that the only like wedding venue in town? Like, it was for ordinary people like me, right? Because uh, you couldn't go to Valley Mac or you right. couldn't go to the Imperial, but okay. you could go in there. It was owned yeah. by a lady called Macket Duff. And okay. um, she, but she did. She there was two. There was two two uh, weddings on. Uh, on that particular morning that we yeah. were there, myself, ourselves, and somebody else. So you arrived at nine o'clock for your wedding, did you? You went to the uh, for the mass you went in St. Nicholas's at nine. At nine, at nine. and you yeah. were here by what time? And we were down. Well, probably, I suppose, with all the photographs and the mm. thousands of people turning up to see me, and um, I wasn't a television star in those days, DC. Right, right, <laughs> but right. <laughs> but, right but uh, it was um, Kevin McCardle, the photographer, right. um, was uh, for Burns, the photography of the okay. chemist shop. He did the photographs. All right. 
Well, listen, we better keep going because we're only on our first photograph. And we've got about oh, you know, yeah, yeah. I have a top here beside us to so keep it an eye on the time. <laughs> okay, so one yeah. more thing I wanted to ask you about was this sign. This looks like G A V A Gavalier. Gavalier. Were you pointed out to me, just I can't yeah, see. Yeah, just here beside the lawn, beside the lawn hotel. There's a sign. Yeah. G A V A L I E R. Gavalier. It's where gun. Cavalier. No, I don't think. Oh, ca is it cavalier? It looks like a G. Is, it, it's is this that sign now that you're pointing yeah, to now? Yeah, that's yeah. The, that was the name of the pub. All right, the Cavalier pub. The Cavalier pub. Okay. Yeah, it. That's. I remember that now. All right. Yeah. So we just pan out to that wider shot, and we were talking about this left-hand side of the street, and and it's remarkable how much that curves. We never really noticed it before. We all think it's a straight street, but you're a hell of a curve. Yeah, and at, it is. If you stand at the post office. You can probably see the green, George. Yeah. Maybe it shrunk or got bigger or Maybe something. I don't know. But I, I, one thing before we move on, Harry, I love this sign that's on the side of the building. And I know Martin yeah. McElligot and his team are working on re-establishing these signs all the way around the town. And it'll be beautiful when it's done. So um, more yeah. of that sort of thing. And he's, is, he's doing the original. Like, for instance, yeah. will he see Martin up? Yeah, he's, he, yeah. he's redoing some of the original signs on the right-hand side. So okay. listen, Harry, will we move on to the next one? Oh, yes. Move, move okay. down a bit. Now, the there was um, a, a further part, the far side of the uh, lawn. And uh, you, just before you go there, Jason, be, yeah. there was a place, it, called, it was a pool's office. And right. um, it was, they sold these scratch cards and all stuff right. like that. Right. You know, oh, you can just see it. You can yeah. see it. Yeah. Just, yeah. I just see yeah. it there. Okay. Yeah, and uh, just, does my can, can you can everybody see me with the arrow as well? Yes. Mine, oh, can they? Yes, they can. Yeah. Yes. All right. Okay. No, I, because I'd be confused. Now, Welsh is the jewellers. Yeah. Uh, very good quality uh, Welsh. I don't know very much about the family because they were nearly uh, closing up when I came involved in it but there was a very very uh expensive not expensive but quality uh shop yeah, so we better, for we a better long remind time people harry that this these photos were taken in in the mid 80s 1984 so this yeah. shop looks to me like it was closing up well then again this was a bank holiday so it might mightn't have been open but your memory is that they were closing up around that time, were you? Yeah, yeah, I would say they're closing up. Of course, maybe, maybe it was. Um, because I, was there another? Or, yeah, there was a shoe shop uh, at one time, I think, in it. Okay. Well, I think so. And then Brendan Marmon's in it Brendan now. Brendan Marmon has it now. Yeah. Now the next shop there used to be known as Corn Corn and Flanagan, and right. they, were, they sold men's clothes. And it was then taken over when they closed down with the McEnany brothers. Right. And they were two chaps and they did um, all the curtains and curtain rails and uh, uh, everything like that. And okay. um, two very, very good Dundalk businessmen. And right. they were there up until, uh, like, well, up until I uh, was still walking there, you know. So okay. but it was a good, good quality shop there, nice building. Okay. I'm just looking here at this sign up in the corner. I can't quite make it out. It says something center. See this up here on the right, Harry, right up the top? Something center. Move the move the thing your, your yeah, mouse, arrow. Yeah. yeah. Something center. I, I, I just can't think. It's an arrow. Or oh, I might say back house is center. Something like that. Okay. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. Do you know what it could be? It could be it, the back entry, maybe into back houses or yeah, something. Yeah, there, it yeah, would be just down the, down there okay. a little bit. Okay, okay we move, move on. Now this is a great photo. Now, um, can you zoom in a little bit there, yeah. uh, Jason, for uh, that one there at the Continental Meat Center, which was the soul salami, and uh, we couldn't afford it, of course. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was corned was, beef we used right, to get. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it was there a good while, though. I think there yeah, was I, very good. I remember while. that being there right up until the 90s. Yeah. Like, I, I remember it, that. Yeah, it could have been. been yeah. But here now, I love this is really, this is really nice. Now, brilliant stuff here with the continental say now then mccusker's hairdressing yeah. now mccusker's were very very famous uh, for their men's 
hairdressing mm. and uh, it was owned by them right up until oh well i'm not i can't remember but certainly up until uh, i was working in club brass street for a good while and there was yeah, there that was there in the 90s as well. I remember that. Harry. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's and it's, it's the lovely small little shop. Mm. And next to it, Jack McCann. And Jack mm. McCann, of course, sold bicycles. He was a mm. bicycle man. Nice. And uh, Jack was a very famous, uh, he, he was involved in the Ross Talton and uh, oh, there were right. bicycle yeah. races around the yeah. country. And he was a very. It was that sign up at the top there. Can you see? It says rally. Jack McCann. That's rally. rally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the bike, of course. Rally was uh, the brand that everybody wanted. Quality stuff. And now next to that was um, Mrs. Stewart's, W. M. Stewart, and mm. that was a shop for turkeys and chickens and fish, and they sold everything. Uh, and one of the things was it was a very very popular shop and she was a, a great businesswoman and anyone that walked from her with her mm. they knew and uh, the, what's the sign up there now fish and yeah. what say it says I flowers it says fish poultry and flowers the flowers yeah Yes, that's and, what they uh, saw. The, the name must say Stuart there as well. Stuart. Well, so, Dougie Stuart now would be um, one of the, his mother owned the shop, and he was a very popular drummer in the sixties with all the bands in the town. Well, and uh, so they were, they're well, well, were very well known. But that's one of the signs that Martin McGelligan is putting back onto the side of the building. That sign is going to be back there, so it'll be great to see it. Now, um, after that one, um, we're into back houses. Oh, the back houses, yeah. yeah. Now, back houses have chopped and changed uh, the fronts and everything uh, so much. There was um, a chemist there, right. and uh, I'm, I can't it says just re remember. There's restaurant and bars. So there's that's a restaurant. His restaurant and bars. That's his back houses center. And I think yeah, I'm, that's it was newspapers. Yeah, I, I'd have to check that out, but or if anyone knows exactly what mm. the what they sold, because it was taken over um, then um, by a few different people, and Tom McGrath turned it into a supermarket. Tom mm. McGrath, of course, who was the chairman of uh, the Dundalk Football Club for years, who right. helped them when they were down in their knees. He'd be badly mm. wanted now. Oh, you and, were telling me um, that Tom, Tom was selling tickets for like a hundred pounds back then, and uh, he'd chase you down the street. Are you oh, he he was a one, wonderful man, and you know something though, that and I was involved in the football club when he was there, and he never got the the uh, appreciation that he deserved because he he was a brilliant, brilliant man. He owned a pub in uh, beside the Dominican Hall. Um, right. for uh, when he uh, when he sold that, he opened that pub up in Arm Street. Right, right. Now, um, move down uh, a little sorry, bit, Jason. Just, be, just before we move on on that one, yeah. Uh, David Sloan says that that was the sellers. So, uh, the, the sellers below, was it, yeah, the it was a restaurant, David. Below. What, yeah, no, yeah, I think, well, it was, it was, it was a kind of nightclub. Oh, it was like, a little a little theatre as well. Right. I remember Frank Patterson. I'm okay. sure your mum and dad, David, would have remembered Frank Patterson in that um, little cellar. I mean, it was, how it got planning permission, probably didn't. I, I don't know either, <laughs> Harry. I was in it when I was about 16 once for somebody's party, yeah. and it was a death trap. To be oh, honest with complete you. You'd death never trap. get away with it. Yeah. Now, but it was yeah. very popular. That's what people yeah. are yeah. years and years. David, yeah. thanks very much for uh, commenting on it. I know your mum uh, would have liked uh, all of this kind of stuff. Now, we go now to um, Jack, Jack McCann, Far Side of Bag Houses. What is that there now? Yeah, is that... So there was a sign here. There's an orange sign here that we've discussed before, and you, yeah, we'll I, come up before you go to that one, Jason. Yeah. What's the white sign? I don't in know. Between? That that looks to me like it's a for sale sign. This shop here looks like it was a, was a clothing shop, something like that. Well, there used to be a shop around that area called Peter Bourne's. 
yeah. Peter B. He was known as, mm -hmm. and he sold ice cream and sweets and everything. And uh, <laughs> um, he was one of these characters, you know. He used to have a counter, and you could sit on stools at the counter eating your ice cream. You know, but we out there, like you know. Mm. Um, where now? Oh, yeah, uh, uh, Denise Belton there has just come in to tell us she remembers Mr. Riley's pharmacy in back houses. Yeah, I remember it now. And Mr. Arthur had the grocery in back house. That's right. It was broken up into different. Th thanks very much, Denise. That's made now me because uh, I thought my head was going there when I couldn't remember. So I'll <laughs> come back to me now. Okay. Peter B's, I think that's where Peter B's was. So move along there now. Okay. Oh yeah, no, the, the, this is the, the 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 boils as we call it. It's right. called Potter Snooker Club now, yeah. but uh, down the yard there, mm. and it was a hugely popular billiard, not billiard, snooker. And I was no good at anything, but I wasn't too bad at snooker. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I used to go, used to spend a lot of my time down there. I spent yeah. a lot of my time down there. I was no good at snooker either. But yeah. when I when you're after, you know, when you finished school and you wanted someone to hang out, I, I spent a lot of time. Yeah, but no, Jess, and I was playing in competitions, Jess. Oh, well, yeah. I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't passing. hanging about, yeah. I yeah. <laughs> okay, we go to the next one, Harry. No, before you go uh, away yeah. from that one, there's one very, very important shop uh, here, was here, uh, was called Dunn Brothers. Right. And Dunn Brothers was the main shop there. And at the side of that, you would go down to the boils. And they did toys at Christmas. Oh, and right. uh, all. And there was a Mr. Coogan. Uh, do, right. And he used to do fort picture framing, which he now actually does up in Park Street, in Dublin Street, rather. And oh. there's the same family, Ian Coogan, oh, right, his son. Ian Coogan's son, right? That's okay. Ian Coogan's son. And yeah, that, that and was he, he was, Harry, just about here or somewhere. Oh, yeah. Yes, the, yes, okay. that was about there. Okay. Right, I think we're dearies are next. I think are we? Oh, what's that uh, sign well, up just, there? What it says, McCann's fruit here. Oh yeah, that's right. But uh, here, Jeff and Jay, not here, Jeff and Jay McCann. No, Charles McCann. Yeah, I think who, we might who, have that. The, they had a wee shop at the top of Air Street as well, a wee right. small one, but. Um, can you get a better view of that one? I will move on to the next photo and let's see if we can get a better shot. Okay. Well, it's oh, past yes. a little bit, but at least that's a good shot of dairies. Yeah, dairies. And at the side of dairies on the right there, there's a doorway, mm. and that's where the textiles was. Oh, Not that yeah. one, the other side. All right, Dundalk textiles. And, yeah. Dundalk textiles, yeah. I hope yeah. I'm right. So, yeah, it is. That's where it was. Mm. Imagine all the people coming out there. Like, there was a couple of hundred people uh, all on bicycles at, at, at dinner time, yeah, you know. We, we spoke to yeah. the previous manager. What was his name again? In Dominic Eating. Dominic Eating, and he was telling us all yeah. about that. And I couldn't believe the size of that operation that was down that little alleyway. Yeah. Down the, the we, we did a, a lovely interview with Dominic Keating about the textiles, and it's on our website, gatheringheritage.com. Well, well worth uh, uh, sitting down someday with a cup of coffee and have a, a listen to it. It was a wonderful, wonderful stories. Dairies now is owned by people called Patterson's before they took it over. And yeah. I'm a bundle of information because I walked down past today, and I remember seeing this years ago and you see underneath the window the glass in the windows there's a wee wall wee tiny there just a little uh about uh, maybe a foot high yeah uh, from the footpath up and patterson's is printed on right. on it and that was owned by people called Patterson, the same kind of business that they were doing okay now next to that there is two shops um they're called thomas matthews now go yeah. just go a wee bit past it jason i can't that's what uh, yeah but it, or, okay well that was owned by two those two brothers and they were from sea town place mm -hmm. and uh, one had a shoe shop and the other had a clothes shop right and they could go sell a pair of shoes and go up for a new suit okay. or sell a shoe and yeah and there were two lovely lovely chaps 
a lovely, warm family, well thought of in Dundalk, and it ran for years and years yeah. and years. The, the only thing is, Harry, yeah. is that the dairies not sell shoes and suits. Like dairies, no, like no, a, they no, didn't they, sell. No, they okay, sold so. corsets and. Uh, all that kind like that, yeah. of underwear and overwear and you yeah. name it and the little man shop then uh, this side here was mm. a man shop mm. and the ladies and haberdashery would be a big you don't know what that is of course yes no no idea no, no idea. needles and threads and all yeah. sorts of stuff like that okay. now um where can you go down to next i can go down, down to there here, so i can ah there's a better i there's a better view of thomas Mann. Uh, yeah, no, Jason, just to the left, yeah, there, there was, it's a chemist, and yeah. that was owned by Rita McCann in my yeah. day. But yeah. that at one time was a shop called Maple, which was, um, it, it was a, an English company, wow. and the, a, a wee supermarket kind of a place, very good oh, quality right. food in it, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and um, now what's the name there on that uh, that sun blind coming out there? Uh, it says Derby, D E R B Y. Yeah, that was I think um, it, one of these boutiques that was creeping up around that time. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go, Jason, just, just can you go slightly? Just now, hold it there. You see yeah. that one? There's Matthew's other shop. Right. There's that's the clothes shop. Yeah. Okay. And you keep going down there. Yeah. Now, this is the home bakery. Yeah. But um, naturally, the home bakery uh, is the same people that it's in Jocelyn Street. Yeah. And they were there for a good while now. Mm -hmm. And I'm not quite sure what's in it now. I think it's just one of these little. Uh, okay. little shops that's yeah, in it now but uh, they did a great business down there actually mm -hmm. and um, now uh, this, there was a pub here upstairs in one yeah, there of was. these that, that looks to me that seems to say amusements to me so it might have been in amusements in the 1980s but there was a pub in there in the 1990s and there was steps up to it I, yeah. Yeah. It, as a matter of fact, Jason, I I, I was walking uh, in late when uh, the pub was there because they used yeah. to do I can't the think sandwiches of the name of the pub. and stuff. Yeah. No, I can't think. I know who ran it. Oh. Was um, a aunt of uh, Doc Darcy's called Phil, and Phil actually uh, walked in the home bakery. Uh, I don't know if it was before or after that, but. Uh, I remember that so well. Okay. Now, um, after that, then is that Duffner's? Yes, it is. Yeah, Duffner's Jewelers, mm. and they were there for a long, long time. A very yeah. well uh, thought of a jeweler. Yeah, they only closed, they only closed recently, like in the last year or two, didn't they? Oh, oh yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah, they were, they were, um, but they were very, very, very popular. Yeah. Now, next to it, I'm not one hundred percent sure. It seems a smaller shop there. Yeah, it looks like I, a, clo a clothes shop or a kind of yeah. wool shop or something like that. I don't you know. You can't get in any closer. No, if anybody can tell no. us what was next door to Duffner's on the left-hand side. We it's a to... strange place to have traffic lights there, I'm just looking at. Yeah, this is the first time. Yeah. What would it have traffic lights there for? It's just to get people across the road, Harry. That's all. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear God! Well, ask a stupid so question. Uh, the next right. Shop, listen, let me let me. Well, do you know what that shop is? It's a bit blurred, but I think I might have a better for it. Jason, what's that sign there? Here. Yeah. It says, I think it says pianos, but that is that's the music shop. That's Comiskey's. No, Comiskey's was bigger than that, wasn't it? I'm, oh, the mice have knocked all them down. Maybe no, for Comiskey's. That's, that's Comiskey's. Let me let me see if in the next photo. Oh, um, yes. It, no, it's yeah. jumped on. It's jumped on. Wait a minute. That's too far. Um, no, that, okay. that was Comiskey's music shop there. And there was a petrol pump somewhere around here. You know that? that was, pump yeah, that was owned by people called Gallagher's. Yeah. And uh, this pe the petrol shop was there a hell of a lot after when they closed up. Yeah, Not for pretty. They took them all away. I know that, 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 that uh, petrol pump was like an antique. It was there for yeah. Like, 20 years now, the, the uh, Coleman's, the Butchers, yeah, um, was there, 
around about that area there. Yeah, it's uh, again that there. that sign there, Jason, the black sign coming out there. I, don't, Can I can't see? see it, Harry, but I think that's Coleman's there. I think that's Coleman's there. Let me just jump forward and then see if I can get a better shot. Well, we're kind of past it, because, but the, the, that, this is a better photograph to be able to talk about. Oh, yeah. Re restaurant and lounge. Yeah. I can't remember. Is that, is that where uh, Michael Smith, uh, Michael Smith, uh, who now is up over in Francis Street. Right. Yeah, they sell uh, pictures and all of that kind of mm. But that, the restaurant, I, I never remember the restaurant. Oh, and you restaurant do, Harry. and lounge. Harry, we've had lunch in there and a cup of tea. Oh, yeah, same. but it, well, Greenmount, but it wasn't owned by the same. Is it, it's it's right, still right. Greenmount. Go on. It was the Greenmount. <laughs> I got you on one. I got you on one. Yeah, you, yeah. you did, yeah. The, the Greenmount uh, restaurant. I can't remember, yeah. Yeah, it's well, well, it was obviously there. This was 1984. These photographs were taken in. Yeah, so that's of course. The Greenmount restaurant looked yeah. like. An, and there's the petrol pump. We were talking about well oh there's the petrol pump yeah. there was one of them up in park street as well was there right okay. somewhere on francis street okay yeah oh yeah anyway yeah. we are doing to francis street now okay. now this the next shop was uh, one of these shops that uh, there's a, an old saying of rory kennedy mm. had to sell uh, put his mind on selling clothes which he should have been then playing musical instruments <laughs> he was he, he owned a Cayley band called the same she Cayley band and sure was meetings and everything fellas going down and playing a new tune that they thought of and a right. wonderful wonderful dundalk man and uh, great memories he was loved in dundalk he was just a very nice man and the uh, one of his daughters has a little shop in park street still and i, I i'm delighted to be able to say that i'm friendly with the whole family they're a lovely lovely family k-tone now k-tone was that a clothes shop a paint shop I th yeah it's where oh. where is K-tone. Uh, wallpapers. That's K yeah. That was that's, that's a, right. It was a, pa a paint and and wall and wallpaper shop. shop. Yeah, you're that's right. No, uh, flow gas. Oh, oh, it? Yeah, Hard flow gas see. was in here. I'm a bit fuzzy now, but there was a flow gas outlet here. But the shop that was next to that sold Delph. You might remember. Yeah, it's the very that. last shop yeah. that there on yeah. the corner of Boyles. Boils, was it? Boil, boil shop, yeah, uh, and uh, there were uh, wholesalers too. They used to travel around the country, and okay. um, yeah, and uh, y y you remember, you know, Adrian Boyle. That's um, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, oh, he's yeah. married to one of them boys. Uh, she's okay. married to one of them boys. Yeah, right. And now, then the, very the very last shop here. Uh, as, as, well, as well, that's on the corner. There's a corner there's York Street. Yeah. That's York so Street that's, there. That's what you do call Burns the Chemist. Burns the Chemist, yeah. yeah. That's right, yeah. yeah. And very, very popular uh, Bourne family. And uh, one of the big things at the side of the wall here, they had... Um, uh, what was it now? A kind of a frame up on it, and their, their photographer Kevin McCarty used to take photographs of weddings and dances oh, and everything, right. and yeah. he put them up there. And all the young ones coming up, coming up to see was the photograph in the wall. That was the place to get. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, Denise, his back shop before Boyles was a little pine shop. Oh yeah, Chattel's. Or something right. you've got it right, yeah. God, you know your you know your stuff. Then we're supposed to be the experts. You're showing us up, actually, Denise. But thanks for that. That's uh, I remember that one now. Now, are you sneaking down then to uh, Church Street? Where does well, Tombrasa Street stop, and where does yeah, Church Street Church begin? Street well, this is the now, last photo, Harry. So we might as well talk about this. Okay, Max Fashions and. Um, I don't think they were owned by somebody from the dog. I have a funny feeling they weren't. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't just remember. But the, the, I remember the shop, yeah. and then um, the gift shop, of course. Uh, again, can't remember who owned it, but uh, it looks as if it's closed there, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks as if it looked, grilled. Of course, it was a bank holiday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't ever remember going into that shop now, to be honest with you. But I. 
the gift oh, shop. Yeah, yeah they sold they sold little trinkets and stuff, and we. Uh, if, so. if you wanted to buy something for a wedding a for wedding, somebody, yeah. you know. Now, uh, the Oxfam shop, they, they were probably, I suppose, one of the first in the, in the town with mm. charity shop, uh, I, yeah. I think. But they did a, a brilliant business down there. Mm. And um, I, I remember a, a few of the people that uh, used to work in it. Mm. Now, what we don't want is people saying that that was in Church Street or because Jason thinks it wasn't. So let's keep him happy. This is now the gem of Dundalk, isn't it? The next shop. Yeah. Jason thought I was going to say you were there. <laughs> <Jason. laughs> it's a, it's a Connors. Yeah. And I was absolutely flittered with a, a person who stopped me to say, will you please stop calling Connors? O'Connor's right and Geraldine if you're listening I apologize for that of course it is Connor's, Connors. Right. a wonderful wonderful shop has not been modernized no. if you walk into it now which I was in it not all that long ago mm. and it is just take you way way back to the 70s and 80s owned by the McCardle family Right. And uh, Jerry was the very, the, Jerry was the man who was in charge of the shop. They had, Donald was a, a solicitor mm -hmm. and a judge actually too. I think he ended up a judge. But there's a lady that um, appeared with, uh, I did a program for a good few years ago now with uh, the street where you live for RTE. And the lady that owns it now is mm -hmm lady called Rosemary, I think is her name, a wonderful, wonderful lady. And we have an interview when the COVID all over, we are going to have an interview. She's a wonderful, wonderful woman. And that shop is still going strong. Okay. So that Let's, took us down now, a, a good bit there. down. Yeah, yeah. Okay, at the right hand side. So we go right back to the start to finish up, Harry. So for anybody who hasn't seen, um, uh, hadn't seen the episode from last week, it's on our YouTube channel and it's on our Facebook page. And we basically went down uh, Clambrazel Street in the year 1984, uh, left and right. So um, uh, we've got about 200, 300 photographs of different parts of town. We did Clambrazel Street. Yeah. And, and the important thing too, Jason, is anyone that has, and I've done it now with... Uh, friends of mine in America even that uh, you can get these on YouTube and you can send them to your friends in anywhere in the world yeah. and uh, they are absolutely delighted and I know my own brother Jerry who lives in London and he got into an argument match when he rang me up and he said I think you got that wrong <laughs> and because uh, he hasn't been around for a good yeah. while but do, do go and send it uh, to your friends and relatives uh, that would love to see Cambrassa Street looks beautiful it there and the it last was thing taken it, it was taken of a bank holiday Monday of course with no cars or anything man our thanks again to Jerry for giving us those so the last thing we'll do to wrap up is this is a social project and um, we're running a crowd funder to keep this type of activity going where we record these stories and we capture all this video um, we're asking people to donate. You can donate on www.gatheringheritage.com, which is our website. So when you go to the website, um, you just click on this Donate Now button, and you can give us a few bob to keep this project going. It's really for future generations. We want to store all this material, and we like sharing it out as well, but we do have to generate a few bob to keep the project going, and we'd really appreciate it. That's on gatheringheritage.com. So thank you very much for tuning in this week. You can share out this video, and I'll give the last word to Harry Lee. Yes, indeed, and thanks to the people who sent in comments. We just love getting the comments, and particularly when uh, Jason has it all wrong and I'm right. Or I made a few <laughs> mistakes tonight, Jason. Yeah, God bless, and uh, keep safe. Cheerio. Bye-bye.